Welcome everybody live to the Gym Master Show Live, Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. Look at your screen. We're going to have some fun on this episode as we have celebrated and gifted ventriloquist, comedian, cartoon voice actor, and so much more. And just like me, a lover of classic television, classic film, broadcast, TV, radio, the whole bit. He's even worked on the air on radio as well as an announcer. We're very excited to have coming to us from South Jersey, just north of Atlantic City. Mike Dupree is joining us here on the Jim Masters Show. Hey, good to have you with us. I am your host, Jim Masters. We are going to have a good time. If you'd like to interact with us, you can just by commenting in our JMS Lovely Hole chat room, which you can uh, partake in when you subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Jim Masters TV. Doesn't cost anything to do that. Say hello to us, to each other, and have a good time with us. If you are like me, you love ventriloquism. You are just somebody who is a big fan of it. You've always followed all of the, you know, uh, all the Edgar Bergens, the Paul Winchells, all of the legends. And of course, you're being introduced to Mike Dupree if you're not familiar with him. He's very, very good at what he does. He loves doing it. And there are some special friends all around him who are going to be joining us in just a second. But there's also a very poignant and moving heartwarming story as to why ventriloquism came into his life. It's really something very, very special. And um, yeah, he's done television. He had a long run at uh, the Tropicana as well. Yes, as one of the leading uh, ventriloquists at the Tropicana in Atlantic City, something very, very special. Born and raised in South Jersey, he suffered from autism before there was a greater understanding of the disorder. Uh, Mike enjoyed watching some of those veterans, like I mentioned. Edgar Bergen, of course, who is the dad of Candace Bergen, Murphy Brown. Paul Winchell, Jimmy Nelson. His parents gave him his first ventriloquist dummy at age four, and it really seemed to help him out and get him out of his shell. Mike has always been gifted with ventriloquism and that talent from an extremely young age. And after doing puppet shows locally through school, Mike landed a job at an Atlantic City radio station, WOND, uh, thanks to his brother at the young age of 16. After graduating high school, he enlisted in the U.S. Coast Guard. And after doing a tour of duty, he started back on radio and landed a job with the local power company at the same time, where he spent 34 plus years working his way to lineman, then troubleshooter, and finally crew chief. And most of that time was spent working at radio stations, doing part-time air shifts and tons of commercials. I been there, done that too. I know what he's talking about. Mike landed his dream job as a ventriloquist and announcer for the Tropicana. And in 2019, a ventriloquist creator, Conrad Hartz, gave Mike a heads up that there was a production company looking for a ventriloquist. He said to submit a video if you act, you know, uh, if you act to them. And not thinking he would ever hear back, they asked for more videos and a singing video. He beat out 150 other ventriloquists. Uh, Mike was offered the chance of a lifetime. As it turned out, it was a major motion picture. And this is the motion picture that I'm talking about. You'll see it in just a second. It's something you may uh, remember this particular one or know of this one. It's, yes, from Universal. It's Halloween Kills. And uh, there's... <laughs> Is that Horace that's in there? Uh, I think so. Maybe we'll find out. We will find out. Uh, but what, you know, an incredible opportunity. And since that time, uh, he's been in several motion pictures and many commercials and credits working with David Gordon Green. Uh, and for all his uh, success, Mike in his spare time collects, restores vintage microphones, broadcast equipment. He's the owner of four RCA broadcast cameras from the early days of NBC and CBS. Yes. Matter of fact, look at the cool setup he's got. This is what the setup, he went through the trouble of setting uh, this whole sort of scenario up. You can see the cameras from WNBC TV, Channel 4 in New York City, NBC and WCBS Channel 2 in New York City, the cameras and the equipment. Yeah. And I think I, is that Horace that I see there? We will find out. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, he's a big collector of all that, as am I too, as you guys know. He still collects wooden ventriloquist figures. He attends the yearly uh, Vent Haven Ventriloquist Convention in Fort Mitchell, Kentucky, every year where he meets up with many longtime fans. 
So we are really excited to have him here. And again, uh, if you are somebody who's always <laughs> dummy up, <laughs> didn't Archie say that? Uh, he really loves, and he's got quite a collection. It's something he's been doing really since childhood. And there's from Halloween Kills. And he's been doing it for years, folks. And he's a, a master craftsman at it. And we are going to have an opportunity probably to meet some of the friends and uh, maybe hear from them as well. Maybe what they think about life and road rage and whatever's going on in the world. <laughs> but again, he is uh, a gifted and celebrated ventriloquist as well as a comedian. And he does a lot of voiceover work too, as I mentioned. Uh, which is really, really cool, uh, cartoons, animated. And there he is as a kid uh, with the ventriloquist dolls and uh, by the Christmas tree, I know. I had a Charlie McCarthy doll when I was a kid, ventriloquist doll. The very first doll I had was the Charlie McCarthy ventriloquist doll, which of course was Edgar, Edgar Bergen's uh, classic ventriloquist doll. And... Um, yeah, we were on a trip one day, uh, coming back from visiting relatives up in New England, and we were coming back home to New York, and we were playing with it in the back seat of our car, and um, my sister pulled a little too hard on the string in the back seat when we were kids, and the mouth busted. So how do you have a ventriloquist doll where well, the mouth is stuck like, and I believe, I recall, we got that, I got that as a Christmas gift that year, so I only had it like a week. Before the mouth snapped, it was a Charlie McCarthy doll out of the Sears wish book. That's where I picked it. It was in the back of the Sears wish book. And, mm, uh, but I've always loved ventriloquist uh, dolls and dummies and just anything to do with it. So without further ado, there's my story of ventriloquism. Uh, we're going to welcome Mike and guests, Horace included, to the Jim Master Show for some fun coming to us again from South Jersey. U.S. Hey, Jim. Hey. <laughs> Boy, that's a hard act to follow. That was, <laughs> this is your life. <laughs> uh, Ralph Edward, this is your life. The uh, Mike Dupree story. Absolutely. And what about being in the back seat of the family car, coming back from our fabulous Christmas relatives up in New England, going back home to New York, and this Charlie McCarthy doll mouth snaps, the string snaps, and the mouth is stuck open, and the doll is rendered no longer <laughs> that that actually happens more commonly than you you would imagine it happened to me that willie talk that i had by the christmas tree that happened to him and the uh, danny o'day that i had uh later on the head came off uh, which was <laughs> just a little wire that keeps them in anyhow it's not a a whole lot but i thought it was going to be one of those stories where uh, you're in the back of the car uh, like the accordion story, uh, the guy left an accordion in his convertible and went inside the <laughs> store and lo and behold, he came out and there's another accordion next to him. It's another accordion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, my God. I've heard so many stories of people were so freaked out with the ventriloquist figures that they'd actually throw them away or uh, <laughs> throw them out the window, <laughs> hide Some, them from their kids. Uh, sometimes the movies or the twilight zone <laughs> episodes sort of probably triggered that for them. But I always thought they're great. I've always as a kid and a big kid too, have always enjoyed things that were um, non-real versions of thing of life. Oh, so the Johnny absolutely. lightning and the hot wheels and the matchbox cars and the train sets and <clears throat> ventriloquist dolls and things that were realistic as far as life, but they weren't necessarily real mini versions of life. I always loved stuff like that as a kid. Yeah. I was always fascinated of course with the, the dummies or ventriloquist figures as we normally call them, but mannequins in uh, the old stores, these kids today don't know anything about the creepiness of the uh, the old fashioned mannequins. Oh my goodness! If you go on eBay and search vintage mannequins, you'll see how scary they really are. And there's a, a creator of ventriloquist figures in England. Uh, he, his name was Len Insull. He created a line of probably the most creepiest ventriloquist figures you've ever seen in your life. They were made out of paper mache, but look them up. I wish I had one. I, the one that I had, I wound up selling, but they were so creepy and that's where nightmares are made from. <laughs> now things. you go to the store window displays <laughs> and the, there's no head. You see a body yeah. and they don't even have a head on the no. 
mannequin now. I think that's even worse. <laughs> yeah. Remember the yeah, Twilight Zone a... episode with that beautiful mannequin? Oh, yeah. Thought she was real From and she immersed herself in the department store and then she had to go back to where the yeah. other mannequins were. Uh, that was an interesting. Yeah, that was uh, cool. I just saw that uh, one the other day. Did you? Fact. Yeah, she was on the fifth floor. And yes. I said, we have no fifth floor. She had to return a thimble that she bought. The thimble. That's <laughs> yeah. right. It was the thimble. <clears throat> This is uh, really exciting because it goes back to your to your childhood, and it was really something very special and pivotal for you on many many different levels. As I mentioned, it's really a it's a beautiful story of your childhood. Tell us, you know, what it is about the ventriloquist uh, dolls, dummies, figures that uh, attracted you so early as a kid. What was it about them? I was fascinated watching Edgar Bergen. He was the very first that I saw. Um, Jimmy Nelson was probably the second. And then the beloved Paul Winchell, who I struck up a friendship with over the phone years later. Um, and he actually is the voice of Tigger. But watching them on 60s television, it was big back then. And then it fell out of grace. And then it was uh, faux pas to be a ventriloquist. But now it's it's hotter than ever with Jeff Dunham, Darcy Lynn, Celia Munez, and uh, Terry Fader. Uh, the list goes on. David Pendleton, which is my all-time favorite. I mean, he is second to none. Um, and he's traveled around the country. But watching them growing up, uh, I was just fascinated. I knew that it was, you know, not real or anything. But I'm four years old watching Edgar Bergen on television. And I'm real, real withdrawn. I was as a child. And my parents uh, knew that I loved the puppets and the little hand puppets. And they got me. Uh, the first one was Charlie McCarthy. Mm -hmm. And they saw that I came out of my shell with the, the dummy. Did it come out and of the Sears wish book? <laughs> like it actually did. did. Yeah, uh, it did. They, uh, they got it for me. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I, uh, it was phenomenal. The changes that happened with that. I was able to communicate through the dummy more than I could myself. Mm. Um, and years later, back in the 60s, when I was going through uh, elementary school, started in 69, I should say 60s, 70s, they really didn't know a lot about autism and no. Asperger's no. Um, like they do today. At least there's treatments and therapies. But back then, there was nothing. They just thought, well, yeah, he's got a the disability special, or learning right. disability. But um, my, my parents would not let me go in any kind of special classes. They wanted me in with my friends that I grew up with. And That's great. I'm so thankful that they did because, uh, you know, it's, it's helped me through the years and, you know, I've overcome certain things and you'll always have autism and the way your, your mind thinks. And, uh, you know, anybody that has a child that has autism, whether it be, uh, I consider myself a milder case of, uh, autism, uh, but it, it could have been worse if I, I didn't, you know, have the uh, the ability to go through the ventriloquist figures as mm -hmm. I did. But yeah. uh, that's how it all started. And did uh, you like parents, uh, the characters on the Mr. Rogers Neighborhood and the Muppets yeah, actually, on I Sesame did. Street? Mr. And I loved Sesame Street. And Jim Henson. Yeah, uh, I loved all the puppets. Uh, and back in those days in 69, when Sesame Street started, there was nothing on TV quite like it. And for autistic mind to jump from one thing to another, it really kept my interest. And I know it kept a lot of other children's uh, interest as well. And that just really uh, set, set the seed in my brain that one day I was going to be a puppeteer, just like Jim Henson. And it was just phenomenal what that show did for me. Mm -hmm. And I loved all the puppets and still yeah. do. Mr. Rogers Neighborhood, and Kukla Mr. Fran Rod and Ollie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that was a little different. Um, Beanie and Cecil was another one. Yes. And they were, it was. Did you ever was, see, I don't know if you saw this, but there was a series on, in New York, Tri-State area, um, on Channel 2, WCBS, and it was, I think, Saturday mornings, and it was Patchwork Family. Patchwork Family. 
and they had this one character that Carol, the female, and then there was this one character that was always with her. And it was, I think it was a two year run and it was Saturday mornings on channel two. If you Google it, you'll see it come up. Um, yeah, that one, that, one that was a recall. really cool. And I think the, uh, the character, the puppet was called rags and he yeah. had red hair. And it was very fluffy and a goofy face. And he was very like, you know, oh, uh, that kind of a voice. Uh, it was, it was really cool. <laughs> and she was always interacting with him. She was, it was like a ledge and he, you know, he obviously was operated behind the ledge, yeah. but she was like leaning over the ledge, always talking to him. And it was a kid's show. Oh, kids. I'll have to check that. I've never heard of family that. Uh, Saturday mornings on channel two in New York. It was wow. uh, because it was, we used to get some New York stations back then. Yeah. I think I remember, South Jersey, you probably got a lot of yeah. Philadelphia, right? Yeah, it was. Cause we had like the Gene London show, Sally star chief half town, happy to clown who was not that happy. <laughs> and, uh, there was uh, a show called Bernie, Bernie Bunyip, and that was a national show. That was unusual. And the characters there, just like on Mr. Rogers, and I I got to give a shout out to Mr. Rogers. He was uh, a kinder, gentler sort of a soul, lower paced. But uh, nonetheless, the puppets were uh, very interesting to me that they were talking and their mouths weren't moving like uh, Charlie McCarthy or uh, Danny O'Day. Right. <laughs> or uh, yeah, uh, Jerry Mahoney and Knucklehead Smith, which were just outstanding. And, and to know that he did the majority of the voices too. Uh, Fred Rogers yeah, did it, King Friday and the Owl. Lady and like, Elaine Fairchild, I presume. Yeah, yeah, he did all those voices. <laughs> yeah. He was he used to he was a minister as well, so yeah. he had those qualities that sort of transferred over to his, you know being an educator as well as a wonderful performer and uh, just inspired so many people, Fred Rogers and that yeah, series. That, that movie that Tom Hanks had, uh, was it Welcome to My Neighborhood? Or yeah. uh, it was about uh, Fred Rogers. What a touching piece that was. And, it uh, really, really very was. Very enjoyable uh, and how then, understanding he really was and, and patient. And then also – on Channel 2 or CBS stations after Patchwork Family, I believe. And during the weekdays, Captain Kangaroo. And who's, <laughs> who's with Captain Kangaroo there, huh? Yeah, there's Horace. He's there's Horace. With Bob they, Keeshan. So how did this happen? How did Horace meet Captain Kangaroo and Captain well, Kangaroo, Bob Keeshan meet Horace? And well, who was more excited to meet who? Horace, <laughs> the captain, or the captain meeting Horace? <laughs> well, actually, uh, I think that's a uh, – <laughs> this was a, a running joke with uh, a couple of my friends, and that's actually a Photoshop I know, with uh, I know. Bob Keeshan. Yeah. Uh, oh, but Horace loved Captain Kangaroo, yes. as did I. Yeah. Uh, Again, the puppetry, yeah. you had uh, Mr. Moose and Bunny Rabbit, and uh, you had Grandfather Clock. And uh, it was just one of my favorite shows as a youngster because it was on from, you oh. know, I can remember being probably three years old yeah. and uh, watching the captain. And the beginning of time, it seems, right? It, it is such yeah. a, a great, great show. Place of another guy that was ahead of his time with, uh, he didn't believe in advertising, uh, didn't want to take advantage of the children. And, you know, there was a, a lot of good thought involved with his show, mm -hmm. but very enjoyable. He was the original Clarabelle clown from Howdy Doody, which is another uh, <laughs> right. puppet show, so to speak. And Conrad Hartz, who you had spoke about earlier, actually worked on and restored, uh, I believe, uh, Howdy Doody. I've seen some pictures with him and he actually worked with uh, Buffalo Bob and you'll see him in some of his shots uh, yeah. holding Howdy Doody and he actually worked them with uh, Buffalo Bob. So it was pretty cool. Well, you've been doing this uh, for quite some time, Mike, haven't you, huh? Yeah. Horace and I have been together probably since uh, the early 90s uh, when I bought uh, Horace. And it I was mean, you mean when, he was, when he was born? <laughs> <laughs> now he was actually born uh, probably five years before I got him. Uh, a late ventriloquist, Rick. You adopted him. him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rick Price uh, was the one who owned him prior to. 
And as the story goes, and I haven't asked Jeff about this, but supposedly Horace here was the inspiration for uh, Walter, uh, Jeff Dunham's Walter. And as the story goes, uh, Jeff Dunham borrowed, uh, uh, you know, Horace, Mr. Horowitz, uh, Bill Nelson, who is a multi-talented creator. Uh, he's an artist. He sketches, he draws, um, and made a bunch of figures, him and Chuck Jackson, and they uh, together uh, created Horace. And I guess uh, they did a little thing during the convention way back when, when uh, Jeff was just starting out. And they used, uh, he borrowed my Horace, which was just Mr. Horowitz at that time, to use on stage to show how you can make up a little act and a routine, which Jeff does often. And he picked him up and used him. And then from what I understand, wanted to buy him, but Rick Price uh, wouldn't sell him uh, at the time because uh, for whatever reason, I don't know, it wasn't, didn't have the money or, or whatever, but he wouldn't sell him. So then years later, uh, Jeff went and created his own Walter, which Walter um, is a total different figure from uh, Horace, but they look pretty similar. You know, the frown, <clears throat> the scowl, so to speak. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, allergies here in New Jersey are horrible. Oh, right? They're rough the, fish uh, here, aren't they? Yeah. And old and everything. Yeah. <laughs> but then Jeff took off with uh, – Walter and he became so multinational uh, popular that Rick said, you know, I can't even use my own figure anymore. And <laughs> he was the inspiration as oh, the story man. goes. So when so, did, uh, when did it come from, you know, go from being a childhood hobby and passion to actually a professional career for you? Because you also worked, you know, have worked in radio. I mentioned W O N D right. and other <clears> stations. <throat> How did you include it into your life where it actually became something you wanted to pursue, uh, you know, full time? Well, what, what happened was I was actually using my ventriloquist figure that I got from Mayer Studios. I was uh, a member of the local fire company, the volunteer fire company. I would bring him to fire prevention shows and the oh, kids wow. just loved that. But when I was in the service, I also had a, uh, a you know, a pretty uh, common figure. It was a uh, just a Jerry Mahoney that was uh, made to be like professional. Uh, it, it looked a little different, a little paint job. Uh, Clinton Detweiler used to uh, make them. And I used them in the service and the guys got a chuckle out of it because I was making fun of my superior officers, which is a no, no, but <laughs> with the, the dummy, I could get away with it. And I thought, yeah, I didn't oh, say it. Is... He said it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then Lynn Tresger, who's a, a great friend. She's a, a wonderful lady ventriloquist. She has traveled all over the country, has a wonderful act. And I was in Atlantic city at the time and working at the radio station. And she says, why don't you come over and uh, see me? I'm going to be at the comedy stop. So I went over there and everybody just loved her act. And that's what made me think, you know what? I should really audition for something in the city. So I did. And once I did that, they hired me on the spot and that was for Tropicana. And that's how that part started. And I thought, you know, here I am working for Tropicana uh, I'm hosting their giveaway show. It's like, let's make a deal. They're bingo. I'm doing a lot of their announcing uh, with fellow performers. Uh, great bunch of people. You'll see a couple there. <laughs> oh, Henri on my uh, on the right there. And then uh, Patricia on the left. And I mean, they were wonderful people and had such a great time. And I thought it couldn't get any better than that. That that's, I figured that was the pinnacle. And I worked there for about nine years on stage and I thought that was it. There's a uh, <laughs> Henri again, and then Keith. And that was a, uh, a Charlie McCarthy, uh, that I, I got uh, years back. Um, under circumstances that are strange, but yeah. uh, then there's uh, Mortimer Snurd, which was also uh, Edgar Bergen's uh, figure. Oh, Mr. Bergen! <laughs> he was always <laughs> a, a goofy character, but lovable. I still have him to this day. That uh, is funny. Look at yeah. this. 
Yeah, that's Diamond Jim. There used to be a guy that would walk around, uh, Dwayne was his name, and John Crow, and they'd wear that and walk around and uh, shake people's hands and everything. Uh, we had a thing called Tivoli Pier at Tropicana. And uh, that thing was hot as all get out. And that's, <laughs> I'm just joking around putting it on my knee as if somebody was in it, but they weren't. And I was making it talk and they snapped my picture. <laughs> oh my God. I mentioned too, that you worked in radio, huh? What was that yeah, like? I sure. Oh, that was wonderful. I, uh, I miss every day of it. Uh, my brother, Chris, uh, has been in Atlantic City Radio since the early days. There I am, at, uh, actually 16 years old uh, in that picture there, wow. W-O-N-D. W-O-N-D. And, yep, W-O-N-D, 1400 yeah. AM. <laughs> then uh, 104 MGM, which was their sister station, they had uh, you know a cast of characters, Tom McNally, who... In anybody in New Jersey radio knows who uh, Tom was, and mm-hmm. a lot of people like Eric Johnson got their start with uh, Tom McNally and yeah. uh, Ellis B. Feaster, who was down in Florida. I worked with him. Um, Tom Lemaine, I got to work with him for a while. <clears throat> Pinky Kravitz, all the the big um, Jerry Blavitt, the, the Geeter, who had just passed away. I worked mm-hmm. with uh, Jerry. Uh, a lot of great guys. Uh, Incredible. And then a lot, a lot of new friends. Everybody that's in radio, pretty much in Atlantic City area to this day, I, I know because most of them have been there for a while. Sure, yeah. Uh, Eddie yeah. Davis, who I think came from your area. I don't know if it was. Did you ever work with um, Channel Forty? That's down there. Oh yeah, that, that was my sister station. I did a lot of voiceovers for them. The TV station, uh, right? Yeah, Ted Greenberg. Uh, he came from there. Uh, a whole bunch of people. James the WMGM was or something. Yeah, it was MG W. First, it was W A A T, and it was out in the meadows in I think Strathmere, down down in uh, below. Yeah, wasn't Ocean there City. also? I remember on Long Island with my rabbit ears when I used to love to DX, where you get faraway stations <laughs> yeah. that would yeah. come in, and I remember there was a station. Didn't last very long, but it was WWAC Channel 53 in yeah. Atlanta City. Yep. And I try yep. to find things online about it on YouTube, whenever, and I can't find anything really about it. Yeah, they were I actually taken, taken over by a cable company. I believe, uh, uh, I forget the name of the company, but it was in Atlantic City. And they had, uh, I think it might have been Ryan Broadcast, Ryan Broadcasting. Um uh, I can't can't recall, but I remember that Ooh, they used to play, um, older shows that were, uh, you know, nobody was airing anymore. Well, then um, you had up north uh, channel 60, 68 and some of the others. And I think it was tied into WHT, which was Momeco Home Theater. But before at eight o'clock, it would switch to the paid movies and scramble the screen. It was the Uncle Floyd show. Oh, Floyd Bovino. Now there's a guy. Floyd uh, is doing good and he's doing his act again. He was under the weather for, uh, he was in the hospital. He was, yeah. He was in bad shape for quite a while, but I worked with him first night, Tom's River. Uh, I used to bring Horace out and and do those kind of events. And I got the, the pleasure of working with Floyd and what a great guy. And I loved his show, Oogie. He had the one of those little Pelham Pals, uh, they call them, the little wood figures. Very, and- like, inexpensive show, <laughs> yeah, yeah. local <laughs> feel. But, yeah. you know, people crave that stuff. Uh, they crave they it do. now more than ever. The, yeah, the nostalgia part is the at nostalgic. this world. Right. Like uh, Gene London. Uh, Gene was uh, just passed away last couple years. But he had uh, traveled. He had, like, a little museum of... Uh, uh, the old gowns that uh, they wore in movies and all, and and it was such a he was such a wonderful person, talented artist. Uh, he could draw um, and create characters, and uh, he did a show. Um, I think it was Cartoon Corners, yeah. where he did a little act. It was so great back then, mm-hmm. uh, black and white TV when it first started. Just Debbie Diddley and the uh, Quigley Mansion. All these, it was. Outstanding. Oh, <laughs> do we have here? Tell our audience who that is. Yeah, is that Nina? Oh, yeah, that is Nina Conti. What a wonderful person. She's from uh, England and she is probably the premier ventriloquist in Australia, also England. And, and here you catch her shows. She's on YouTube. Uh, 
she is so funny. She yeah. has this uh, little monkey, and <laughs> uh, it, it's hard to explain. Yeah, um, she can um, definitely for an, uh, an adult audience. Uh, yeah, such as myself, I uh, I did do uh, children's uh, things because I used to, and I was lucky enough to be sent out from uh, Atlantic City Electric, who I worked for for many years. As a lineman, they have this program called Lineman for Safety. And what they would do is send linemen out to talk to the kids and show them the rubber gloves and sleeves and, and talk to them about electrical stuff. And the kids would like it because it would break up the day. But when I brought my ventriloquist figures in, that's when it just blew up. Then all of a sudden, I'm getting requests or my bosses from people in Pleasantville and out of my area saying, well, hey, we want this other guy. We don't want these linemen. And it you know made a couple people a little upset that – you know, here it is their territory and I'm coming in doing a safety show, but it worked out very well for me. The, uh, the kids loved it. And I have, and I had done it for so many years. I have adults coming up to me saying, Hey, you're the guy that came into my class when I was uh, in third grade and you did the, and it was fascinating. And then once I was in the movie Halloween, I had those same people come up and say, you were in my class with that dummy and you were in Halloween and I couldn't believe it when I saw you. And it, it was pretty cool to, to go through that. Cause I'm just a regular guy from Tuckerton. <laughs> <laughs> the radio who, guy, uh, right? Yeah. Who had so many lucky breaks in life. I gotta say, if it wasn't for my brother, Chris, I'd never be on the radio. There I am at the uh, entertainers luncheon. That was just a right off the top of my head kind of a thing. And uh, I, I performed very briefly there. Um, that's at the ventriloquist convention. And uh, oh. <laughs> Dan Satchoff, you turn on the TV any time of the night and day, you will see Dan, whether it's in uh, uh, Meet the Ricardos. He played one of the producers from that's CBS. Right. He is uh, in Little Caesars. He's done those commercials. He's done Toyota commercials, sports cuts, uh, it's funny because we say, where can we see Dan at next? I'm in our local uh, <laughs> club that I hang out at and we're watching these TVs and all of a sudden there's a, I said, there's Dan. So everybody that never met Dan in their life now say, there's Dan over there. He'd have a fake mustache on, but he is one of the hardest working actors in television today. And I was doing a spec commercial for uh KFC that day. Uh, yeah, that's I, right. Yeah, I was in Louisville, Kentucky uh, Louisville, Fried Kentucky. Chicken, yeah. So I, I came in and I you left were the it. Colonel. Yeah, yeah. You look, you and did they, look they like did use there. it for some uh, online advertising. I saw. And I, yeah, I got Colonel a little bit of Kentucky uh, Fried Chicken. Yeah, paycheck. But when I came back, uh, Satchoff was there, and I had to. I said, "Come on, we got to get a picture together." But great guy and a uh, wonderful wonderful person You'll how many do you else. have um, in your collection i know there's quite I, a few this is just some i have yeah. 20 regulars that i keep uh the it goes up and down i'll i'll sell one that i don't use like the the preacher on the or the priest on the right there i got rid of him uh i don't use him any longer uh he how was get, how do you get rid of a priest <laughs> without a lightning bolt coming through your roof. Well, I, mean, I could say an off-humor joke. Did that but require I, a seance or something? Or, <laughs> was yeah. it an exorcism? Yeah. How do you do that? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a little story behind uh, that figure, and I got rid of him. He was actually supposed to be in the movie with me, but the gentleman who created him wouldn't release, uh, you know. Wouldn't. Well, you are in New Jersey, so I wanted to know how you got rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> Who did you call? <laughs> he had to call the Vatican to turn him in. <laughs> yeah, and I'll leave that at that because I don't want to. <laughs> you don't Catholics want anybody to, come out to knock me. on the door. <laughs> yeah. But I, for the movie, Horace here was created, like I said, by Bill Nelson and uh, Chuck Jackson carved them. But Bill Nelson created them and holds the copyright on them. So I called Bill up and Bill was like, sure, you can use him. Just give me credit at the end of the movie as creating him. So I said, well, I can run it past the producers. I, I called uh, Jason Blum up because I had Jason's personal number. And I said, uh, uh, 
Bill Nelson said that we could use Horace as long as we give him credit. And he said, done. Absolutely. That's the one we want. He said, I didn't like that priest character anyhow. He said, he's <laughs> creepy. <laughs> and he to said the priest him. thing wouldn't go well. <laughs> to hell with him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is funny. But it's funny. So uh, that, this, who are some of the characters that you have around you now? We see some uh, fabulous well, faces there. Of course, and Horace. Do, uh, do any of them want to uh, join the conversation? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's uh, Cecil. And he's very uh, hard to operate. He has like uh, 10 different uh, movements, uh, sniffling nose. And uh, I'll bring him down. He, he weighs more than any other figure that I have. Uh, but there's a couple brothers named the McElroy brothers. They created these figures back in the day. And uh, he looks they very were, excited uh, to be on the yeah. master show. Look at his eyes. <laughs> Hey, Jim. How hey. you doing, buddy? Hey, how are you? Isn't it exciting I'm to be good. on the Jim it's Master Jim. Show? I know it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you two been friends? Not long. Just I know. Uh, uh, about are you still three friends? years. <laughs> oh, <that's... laughs> but, yeah, yeah, he's got so many movements that... Uh, you know, it's it's hard to keep uh, track of everything he does. And, got nice uh, teeth. <laughs> You brush often, don't you, my friend? <laughs> you got to. <laughs> I got George Washington teeth. They're made out of wood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, your breath stinks. It does. <laughs> I had sardines. <laughs> smells like you ate a skunk. So his favorite celebrities yes, are uh, Woody Allen and Woody Woodpecker. Yeah. I would imagine. <laughs> 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 but uh, anyhow, I'm going to put him back because he's uh, quite, quite trying at the best. He's so heavy. Um, yes, you but... take a little nap there. We, we, it was so <laughs> good to see you. And then uh, I have a, another fellow right here. You know what happens is after you see that, you think the head is still moving on its own. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at this character. Who do we have there? <laughs> Where am I? You're uh, you're actually on Jim Masters television. Oh my goodness, the Jim Master Show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's great to see you, Jim. That's good to I, see I you see as him. well. Oh, he's on the TV. So. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually carved uh, out of wood. Hey, not that old, <laughs> but. Uh, he, uh, he, Georgie from Bulgaria uh, carved him for me. He's a, a custom figure. <laughs> I'm accustomed to, to pretty much anything. <laughs> Who does your hair? Anybody that wants to. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about all the road rage on the highways these days? <laughs> I don't think much of anything these days. <laughs> I don't drive. Oh, oh, that's right. <laughs> You're, you have a driver, I'm sure, right? Oh, I do. Uh, he do. drives me nuts. <laughs> well, that's a that's a short drive. You're telling me. So, how do you <laughs> like working with uh, Mike? Who? Me, <laughs> Mike Dupree. That's your name. <laughs> of course, it is. Oh, uh, uh, he's a good guy. <laughs> I'm just kidding you. <laughs> he gave you a leg up in the industry, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Anytime, see, we got a dog in the house, and anytime there's a, a leg up, it's not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the back, um, you can see that's my uh, Conrad Hartz. Oh, yeah, let's, the guy that yeah. gave me the heads up for the movie part. And, uh, you know, I have him to thank for my movie career. Uh, he created him for me, uh, and I I've always loved the the hearts figures, and uh, he's such a, a an easy figure to work. Whereas uh, <clears throat> this one's a little harder to work. And then I'll uh, bring Horace over. Horace is actually my favorite. We've spent the most time together. Sorry about that. Uh, Does Horace know he's your favorite? Uh, <laughs> you're darn right, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Crying out loud. What are you doing? We're, so tell us about Horace's background. Well, he, uh, like I said, is a uh, 
uh, a Nelson creation, but uh, he, he is also an accountant. I work for the IRS. You do. Hey, darn right I do. Better watch yourself. I'll audit you. <laughs> you're uh, you're made out of wood, though, right? Yeah. I got hemorrhoids real bad. Stop that. You don't tell people that. Yep, yeah, I'm made out of naughty pine. <laughs> naughty pine. Yeah, what a place for a knot. <laughs> So you've been uh, you've been all over the place, haven't you, Horace? You are. I uh, sure have, Horace. You are a star. I mean, you've been. Oh, look at that good-looking guy! And I'm not talking about you, the three. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now what's he, happening there, Horace? Did you say something a little? Uh, he, yeah, yeah. I was going to say that the bad four-letter word that begins with an S. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he sticks his hand over my mouth. Well, we know it's not the word slinky. <laughs> no, but it's just as stinky. <laughs> so, uh, so Horace, how did you like being in this movie? Uh, Halloween oh, Kills. Oh, wow. It was the thrill of a lifetime. <laughs> a thrill or a kill of a lifetime. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis was the best. Yes. I love that lady. Oh did, my goodness. Did you realize, Horace, you were surrounded by major Hollywood talent and veteran actors and actresses? And did you realize no. all that? No, I didn't. You didn't, not, huh? Not at all. So they, what? it was it was like I was hanging around with a bunch of friends. <laughs> yeah, they were. It was it was pretty amazing. They treated me and Horace as if we were A A listers. Everybody treated us so great. Uh, um, Anthony Michael Hall, it was like he was a, a buddy of mine. We were just hanging out. Uh, Michael Smallwood, that's right. He was there. Oh, we met so many good people. Robert Longstreet was another one. Yeah, Robert. He's in a, so many spooky movies. We, and um, like I said, Jamie Lee Curtis was there. Uh, Amy Matichak, we got to meet. Yeah, we sure did. What a sweetheart she is. That's so <laughs> crazy. That's, I love it, huh? <laughs> yeah. And uh, Barbara Dole. Yeah, Barbara Dole. She was uh, <laughs> she was uh, the caterer chef. And he, uh, Horace, of course, definitely liked her. I sure did. She was my favorite. So, she, uh, so when you're on stage, she... what are some of the things that you like to share and, and talk about, Horace and Mike? Uh, Maybe you can give well, our audience, they're watching, they're all commenting, and uh, a little preview. Uh, <laughs> well, that's, that's or... the thing. Unless, uh, <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> when mainly... somebody starts a sentence with, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, we mainly did a adult audience, and uh, I don't know if uh, colorful jokes... Uh, go along real well but uh, uh we could do one of the milder ones uh like uh, so uh, horace this is probably you know uh, we've been around a while so you haven't been dating how's your sex life i hold my own <laughs> i guess with a face like that you have to <laughs> screw you stop it now behave i uh i'm gonna have to make a doctor's appointment for you why you're getting to that age now that you have to have that thing done. A colostomy? No, it's not a colostomy. A calliope? No, it's not a calliope. Well, what is it? It's a colonoscopy. Oh, geez. I had one done five years ago. Well, you got to do it every five years. Oh, geez. Did they find polyps the last time? No. What did they find? Cufflinks. <laughs> uh, that explains where they went. Yeah, that's where <laughs> they went, all right. <laughs> but that is probably the milder part of my act that uh, probably. I can share with you. <laughs> yeah. Any more we go into the further parts, <laughs> it's uh, not good. <laughs> not at well, all. Well, especially during a colonoscopy. That's what the doctor <laughs> yeah. says, too. Boy, that Anytime we go into the further parts, <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is funny. Uh, Austin uh, Field is watching. He says, that is awesome that you're in Halloween. I love that movie. <laughs> yes. And he also asks, are they like real people? Just like real people. 
Uh, Nick said to Maria says he's a Horace of a different color. <laughs> <laughs> and Nick was on the show with us. Yeah. Oh, uh, was he? Hey, fabulous Nick. film historian and actor and comedian. And he was, awesome. on, the, he was on the episode with us with uh, Chris Costello, Luke Costello's daughter. Oh, Abbott and Costello. Talk about. I love them. Talk Why about is... history, right? Who's on first? I don't know. Third base. <laughs> And that's not where you went with a lot of girls. Stop it. I'll tell you about that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so uh, does, does uh, Horace, uh, is, is his rate very high when he goes on stage? Does he bill you? How does it work? Eh, not really. He's pretty reasonable. Uh, in fact, uh, you don't ask very much. No, no, I don't. Just the uh, girls' phone numbers. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he likes girls. So uh, you like girls I gather? No, I like the girls I gather. I see the ones you gather. <laughs> Ruth, Ruth, Ruth. Stop it. Uh, has he yeah. ever, uh, Mike, has, has Horace ever looked into like Botox at all? You know. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Tim Mathis. <laughs> That's Tim Mathis. <laughs> you can't even read, can you? No. I mean, does both talk on, on wood? Or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sure does. <laughs> Hor Horace, how old are you? Old enough to know, but young enough to still do it. <laughs> <laughs> can I tell him what kind of tet I have? Kind of yes, pet? what kind of pet? No, no. Oh. <laughs> <A turk. laughs> oh what Stop it. I've, I've got people out there that are watching that may have kids around. <laughs> he has a whole They don't about... now. They did before, <laughs> 10 minutes ago. <laughs> they were all sent to bed without their ice cream. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> so, Horace, what do you like to eat? And do you? Uh, you know, a little of this and a little of that. And uh, don't even think about saying that other thing. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> he knows me too well. <laughs> you do like ice cream, though. I sure do. What brand do you like? You like uh, um, Hershey's? <laughs> yeah, I like Hershey's and whatnot. That's a good plug, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. They don't make the kind that you used to like. Abbott's. Yeah. I've never tried whatnot. Which one is that? <laughs> <laughs> ben and Jerry's, that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, Briars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's now you're talking. Turkey Hill in our area. So Horace. Turkey Hill's um, the best. Horace, do you sleep in the same room with all of the others or do you have your own uh, I have my there? own abode. <laughs> He takes good care of me. <laughs> and uh, the other guys, they're in the studio, safely tucked away in uh, bookcases. <laughs> me, I have my own room. I deserve it. Uh, yeah, you do. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Safely tucked away, huh? <laughs> yeah. But when uh, we have visitors, that's what everybody wants to see is him. And anybody that comes to our house trick-or-treating, I'll uh, usually have them with me as I'm handing out yeah. the candies for the kids. Oh, yeah. like that. What a fiasco that. that is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when you go to bed, Horace, you don't like, like a lot of people do, you don't shuffle off. You, you tuck off. Huh? <laughs> Boy, he's making it too easy. Stop it. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, <laughs> you're gonna get me in trouble, Tim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, don't do that one either. <laughs> How wait, come every time wait. I see F? <laughs> I, I, I somehow you, I think you're a psychic. You're intuitive. Somehow you know, Mike. Like you're able to tell him, don't do that one before he uh, even says it. Yeah. yeah I guess yeah. when you work with somebody that long, you sort of kind of feel each other out would you say that you uh you have feel each other well, out i gotta say he's an opportunist when it comes to comedy and if you set him up he's liable to crack 
yeah, I'll crack a joke. Yeah, off color, of course. <laughs> like, <laughs> like when we used to do the uh, the children's safety shows for the electric company, uh, we would start out by, uh, you know, saying, uh, what's the fastest thing in the world? And the kids would say, the speed of light. And then I would say, well, you know what else that travels the speed of light? And Horace would say, McDonald's food. <laughs> McDonald's food? Yeah, you eat it, goes through your body faster than anything. <laughs> but the kids would be like, what? what was talking about? But the parents and the, the teachers would be laughing because they knew what was implied by that. That is so <laughs> funny, huh? So why do you guys like work working together? What is what is your relationship like? Uh, I get all the cast off uh, the women that he gets and stop. You do not. Yeah, it's, it's it's just a good thing. It works. He treats me good. You know, it's uh, you know. Are you going to be going on the road soon? Anything uh, coming up? Well, we were on strike for the longest time, the Screen Actors Guild. So there was, uh, we couldn't put in for any jobs or anything of that nature. Uh, but in the meantime, I was talking to uh, Anna Bronstein, who is a, a great producer and writer. We were in her uh, silent call with uh, Doc G from Hamilton Radio. He was in that with me, and uh, we had such a, a great time. And Anna is just a wonderful lady. She put her heart and soul in that movie, and she had, uh, well, not necessarily Horace. Yeah, you left me out of that one. We had a, another figure that I have, uh, Robert, that we used for a silent call. And Can anyone hear me? Nobody's listening. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a, a great movie. The Gilbert Diaries, Frank yes. Medica. Oh, my goodness. Uh, what a wonderful guy he is. Wow. He's all right. No, he was real good. You know, uh, Nick Santa Maria said that his proctologist likes to look up old friends. <laughs> Did he give you the thumbs up when you were done? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's one that uh, he can get away with saying. <laughs> that was quick too. He's quick. Horace is quick. He's he's on yeah, tonight, fast. right? I'm fast. <laughs> so, how did you like? All those years at the Tropicana. What a great oh, that place, was, huh? That was where you cut your teeth at. That was uh, where they could make you or break you because a lot of those people, you know, are out there gambling. And they don't want to be bothered with, uh, you know, somebody with a ventriloquist figure. But uh, other people just loved it. And we do the, uh, uh, the Tivoli Pier and the call the bingo. Everybody had just a wonderful time. And, uh, uh, I would run into people forever saying, oh, yeah, I love when you called the bingo and you did this and you did that. And, uh, but, yeah, it was, a, it was a fun time and fun period. Got to work with a lot of famous people and up and comers that uh, came through there. John Darrellero, <laughs> John, <he's, laughs> John and John. Yeah, they're not together anymore, so don't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, who was your favorite uh, out of everybody? Hell, it wasn't Bill Cosby. I'll tell stop it. <laughs> Don't bring up that. But who was your favorite? Did you stop eating yeah, Grello? I like George <laughs> Wallace. George Wallace. Jay Leno was cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jay was a good guy, wasn't he? Yep. Carrot Top. He's yes. weird. As weird as they come, the funny as all get out. <laughs> no, he was he was a good guy. He wasn't weird. <laughs> Get me in trouble. These guys will never talk to me ever again. I was going to say, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, who writes your material for you, Horace? Or does it just come naturally? <laughs> it doesn't come at all. This guy, I'll tell you. Stop it, stud. I am a stud. <laughs> Excuse me. Wait, you're you, a stud, you, you've got you? my, Horace, you got my <laughs> all choked up. Choked up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a stud? Yeah, I can't even go into Home Depot. How come? The alarms keep going off. The alarms? Yeah, the stud finders. <laughs> He's been banned from all horse farms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like horses. <laughs> you got Mike all worked up. He's choking and needs a glass yeah. of water. It's, He's it's turning those... his face is turning red. He doesn't know what you're gonna do next, Aris. Yeah, he get the ugly in two colors. Stop. <laughs> So who's the one that really runs the show, Horace? Is it you or is it Mike? 
Who I really calls I, the shots? I well, I think it's it's Mike's uh, ventriloquist. Because <laughs> oh, Mike, Mike is a dummy. <laughs> oh, you mean there's He's somebody a, that's pulling Mike strings too? I, yeah, I think so. What's really? Her name? And there's nobody. Jeez. He's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> so how does it feel being on the Jim Master show? Jim who? I thought it was Tim. It's not Tim. Isn't it Masterson? No, it's not Masterson. How? And it's not the gymnastics show either. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You know Jim Masters as well as I do. I never seen him the day. You have so. Stop. <laughs> I've had a great time. Oh, I'll tell you that. Well, that's a good thing you have. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Horace, I slipped you $20 to say all those nice things. And I'm glad that you followed the lead. Oh, is that where that came from? I guess it was. Hey, would it kill you to give me another 20 spot? Stop. <laughs> You're cheap, too. I'm so cheap that when I walk, my butt squeaks. <laughs> so, Horace, uh, do you sometimes come out of your, your room at night and go down to the refrigerator and grab a snack while Mike no, is sleeping? Not the way this guy cooks. Are you kidding? <laughs> He's horrible. What do you like to I, eat, Horace? Uh, I like hamburgers. You do, huh? Yeah, and oysters. You know what they say about oysters? <laughs> they make they you climb up? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to him. Yeah. No, do something else Listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> Not trying to steal your act, Taurus. <laughs> yeah, believe me, there's no act. <laughs> Just trying to contribute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll be no, cussing in a village, minute. You know that whole takes a village thing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the village is uh, less one knucklehead. Stop. Horace, Horace, you know, you know, you look like a very young Uncle Charlie, William Deverest from My Three Sons. Oh, yeah. I do. Look, look how good I look, Mike. Look how good I look. <laughs> Are you dating, Horace? Not yet. No. But huh? he will in another month to, if he doesn't find a girl. I'm not going to. <laughs> Am I dating Horace? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Boy, did I take that the wrong way? <laughs> I think you might have uh, reversed that. Uh, Horace, uh, any hope? I don't know. He does have his hand up my butt. Stop it. He has his hands full. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See that uh, lump in my throat? Yeah. I, yeah. Where'd it's that his come? fist. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you. Well, it was nice uh, having you on the show, Jim. You're going to get kicked off the air come tomorrow. <laughs> you have been very uh, <laughs> wonderful and and relatable and authentic, Horace, and a great oh. conversationalist too. I Don't you know, know it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> what, uh, what do you go on cruise ships and and what are, what kinds of things? I, would you I like, have been you guys uh, like to do you and Horace. I did the cruise ships back in the nineties. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, but see, I worked for the uh, electric utility and I didn't have a lot of spare time back then because I had to take vacation any time that I would do that. So uh, it would eat my vacation up and so I couldn't you, do the you other worked things. in the land of shock and awe. Uh, <laughs> did he? <laughs> a lot of pretty girls. Up to a lot of pretty anymore. girls. A lot of ugly ones. It, it was not that. <laughs> so is yeah, there another a, movie that you'd like to be in, Horace? I mean, you've been in some major blockbusters. Yeah. What would you like to be in? I'd like to be in the next uh, Halloween. But it was Halloween ends. David Gordon Green, they're not going to be making anymore. Jason Blum said they're not going to do it. And they couldn't fit us in the last one either. Yeah, but they're going to do it again. I'd like to come back. <laughs> would you? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. But uh that was a great exposure, uh, oh, you know, imagine. worldwide and everything. Yeah. I, and I still get the notes from people all over the world that, uh, you know, find me on uh, Facebook or YouTube or what have you. And it's nice to hear from them. That's so you now, Horace, you don't you don't call yourself a dummy, right? No, I am a ventriloquial figure. <laughs> How's it? <laughs> a ventriloquial oh, wow. figure i don't even think i can say it well you sort of did <laughs> you may have to see the vascular surgeon for that <laughs> a 
it's like <laughs> <laughs> you got Mike all the, worked up hard. Yeah, the uh, I'll tell you what. The, I have a window open, and the allergies are real bad here in New Jersey. How are they in Connecticut? <laughs> Connecticut. Yeah, what, Connecticut. What? I'm from Connecticut. <laughs> Stop it. Which window is open? <laughs> <laughs> the one I'm about ready to throw him out. Screw you. And is the window blowing hot air? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. It should be. <laughs> That's actually cool tonight. It's, I think it's uh, down in the 50s right now. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's going to make me work. I do have a question. And yeah. I've never thought about this, you know, being such a fan of ventriloquism and, and having had that Charlie McCarthy doll early as a child. But mm -hmm. this would be merely Horace Moore, because I've been asking you a lot of the questions during our conversation. And it's an honor and a pleasure to have you on the Gym Master Show Live series, Horace. But Mike, You're right it is. <laughs> uh, have you ever dealt with a situation and how do you as a professional, skilled, celebrated, gifted, acclaimed, renowned, <laughs> iconic Horace, did I get all those right? I'm going to throw <laughs> up. Uh, ventriloquist. <laughs> How do you handle it? Literally handle it. Handle when, it. When Horace, <laughs> he's, he's got a strong right hand, I'll tell you that. He's yeah. got a good grip. <laughs> and with that in mind, Mike, how do you handle it when Horace farts? <laughs> That's got I got to wash my hands. Be, that's got to be. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This, this, <laughs> does it ever blow your mind? <laughs> yeah. What happens when you fart? It blows up your sleeve. <laughs> You're a sick man. Does, <laughs> does it make your bow tie sort of spin? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. His hand tastes like butt. Yeah, but it's your butt. <laughs> <laughs> I that's right to, i didn't mean to butt in <laughs> <laughs> yeah you were made out of wood right yeah, yeah. sure am so well, then what would it be like maple cedar or oak <laughs> when that happens i was i was made out of the naughty pine <laughs> and a bad place for a knot in the back you know what i mean that's what was the worst tough. part about being carved the head stick <laughs> it hurt the whole time he was doing it <laughs> Look at the expressions of the others around you guys. It's like, I got to listen to him again say all this. <laughs> the one to the left. Look at his expression. He's got like, are you kidding me? I've heard this routine uh, over and over he's again. He's a goofball. <laughs> he's from Bulg Bulgaria. And, and the Bulgaria. one on the right, the, the one on the right's kind of like, how come he's getting all the attention? All I got was to say two sentences. <laughs> it's, he don't know any better anyhow. He's stupid. Stop it. He, he's, that's Reggie. He's got so many uh, options that, that he's he's tough to work uh, unless you have a, a routine going on. Right, yeah. he seems like he's very by the you know the look of his eyes. He's very very excited by this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've he's never got... really used him yet. Um, in fact, I should start uh, all, uh, practicing with him because he is such a a great figure and a, a great creator from uh, Maine. Uh, helped refurbish and create them. Uh, Austin Phillips from Phillips Puppets. Oh yeah, uh, sure. Did an yeah. awesome job with him painting and everything. Uh, from what I understand, he came in all different parts and <laughs> bad castings and whatnot. And he's the one that uh, put them together. <clears throat> but he's one, him and Tyler Ellis are the two across the country that do fabulous work. Uh, restoring ventriloquist figures and whatnot. oh that's so cool huh yeah it is wow and i'll i'll tell you i love going to the uh ventriloquist convention every year uh network with a lot of great people you can see uh oh, other side <laughs> uh, jimmy v has a book out it's uh making your sock talk it's a great book for people that are interested in becoming ventriloquists you uh, read his book and it, it gives you a step by step how you can teach yourself ventriloquism. I, of course, uh, am self-taught. I, uh, when I was little, I actually heard the Jimmy Nelson's record, how to become a ventriloquist. Uh, I listened to that. And then as I was able to read, I, I read uh, Paul Winchell's book and the, the books that come in the ventriloquist dummies, the little ones. Uh, that's how I, I learned how to do it. And my, <clears throat> my parents uh, sort of said, 
you know, you're going to have to uh, learn how to do it um, or else we're not going to buy you another ventriloquist figure because I had broke the other one and they weren't going to just go out and buy me a new one because back then money was hard to come by. Tight. So I actually learned how to do it so much that uh, they felt, well, we got to get them another one. So. <laughs> That's amazing. so how many do you have, would you say? How many? I, I have 20 regulars that I have on display. <clears throat> and then there are several that are in various stages. Uh, my very first professional one that I got from uh, Mayor Studios, uh, he's been warped <laughs> for uh, quite a few years. Uh, being left in a hot car in a trunk isn't good for ventriloquist figures. So he's no, worked and bad needs in to be, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> needs to be refurbished. I have a couple that uh, I had purchased that wood ones that, that need to be total restored and put together. And uh, the controls have to be redone. But I can uh, show you how Horace works. Yeah. I, I won't show this to everybody because I don't like to ruin the illusion. But the artwork that goes into these sticks is just phenomenal. Uh, but this is what we call a trigger. <laughs> I feel so naked. <laughs> that's what you call then, a neck lift. <laughs> and then that's the uh, eyebrows raising and lowering. Hey, I am good looking. <laughs> How do you like my stick, Tim? It's Jim. They all think you look like you look like a young Uncle Charlie from My Three Sons. <laughs> That's what the viewers have been saying. <laughs> so, how long did it take you to from childhood to really master the craft? And how has ventriloquism changed over the years? The uh, for me, I was very fortunate. I uh, I learned how to do it uh, very well about five years of age i was doing every christmas when i'd get a new figure i'd come in and put on a little show for all the kids uh but i don't remember personally i would spend hours in front of the mirror practicing so i had it down by the time i was a teen uh, really good um stupid jokes pretty much like the ones i still use you're telling me you're telling me <laughs> did you get to meet some of your um the mentors, you know, people that you admired. Did you ever get a chance to meet any of them? Yeah, I I actually got a chance, not in person, but on the phone with Paul Winchell. One of um, my favorites. I love his voiceover work. Oh, oh, his voice was so distinctive. He uh, he did uh, Tigger for me because I said I love Tigger and so many knucklehead. characters he did. Yeah, yeah. Jim. Voice. Um, he go. Oh, the funniest thing about Tigger. Tigger don't like honey. <laughs> But that was Knucklehead Smith's voice. Jimmy Nelson, I talked to probably a couple times a year. Uh, great guy. He had passed, unfortunately. He was down in Florida. Uh, wonderful soul. He, I used to love watching. Uh, you know, one of my very first figures was uh, Danny O'Day, which was his. And he had Farfel. Yeah. Nestle, Nestle's makes the very best chocolate. <laughs> he had that uh, dog. What a... What a great class act he was. And I was so glad that I had a chance to meet him. I would have loved to have met Edgar Bergen, obviously. Uh, Jerry Lane, I was real close with. Uh, Jerry was a good guy. And we've lost so many along the way. Uh, and it's, you were mentioning, you were mentioning all these names and they're all, you know, I'd love to welcome them on the show. Uh, yeah. kind of, we'll have a group of you too at the same time. But uh, yeah, I can make uh, it, some contacts for you. It's um, have your people call our people. <laughs> yeah. In fact, Al Gettler, who has done many shows, he's probably the ventriloquist that I've known the longest. In fact, he's going to be coming to my house in November sometime. He's going to be. Get uh, Gettler. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Al Gettler. Um, he's, a, he's a good guy. Funny. Funny as all get out. He's on the board <laughs> of trustees for the, the Van Haven uh, Museum in uh, Fort Mitchell, Kentucky. And that's what the convention is based that's around. Where did you also? I also, as a kid, in addition to loving ventriloquism, and it's funny, I, I you talk to people that know me personally, family, friends, colleagues. I mentioned ventriloquism a lot, and and I sort of thought it was waning that it, you just didn't see, and maybe it's because you're not seeing them with television specials and everything like you used to, where it was just right. out there. <clears throat> You have to seek it out more, but it's still, and it seems now to be sort of on a curve up. Huh? Yeah. 
Well, L Willie Tyler and, of course, Lester, they've been around. Uh, he's done many shows over the years. He's still active. He's around. But in the 70s, yeah, it started going downhill. And then, of course, Edgar Bergen had passed away. And uh, it sort of got put on the back burner. And whenever they'd say, oh, there's a ventriloquist, they'd be like, yeah, okay, Ed Sullivan, yeah, that's so passe. Then Jeff Dunham comes along. And he puts a, a flame in the fire here and really kindles, a, you know, a big following. And he was still is real creative. He can come up with an act uh, faster than I can change my shirt. But he uh, has just turned around the, the field and opened it up. And now you have Celia Munez from uh, Spain. She's a wonderful lady. I met her uh, <clears throat> a couple times. Uh, salt of the earth she is. Uh, Lynn Tresger. Uh, Darcy Lynn, who uh, I got to meet for the first time, uh, she would come to every convention as a little girl, and uh, then she got on America's Got Talent. John Peasy, who's a local ventriloquist who was also on America's Got Talent. Mm. Uh, Terry Fader, who won the competition, and now he's bigger than big out in Vegas. Uh, a super nice guy, too. Uh, there's really – and <clears throat> Jeff Dunham, of course, is the biggest uh, – right now in America, Nina Conti in, uh, <clears throat> in England, like I said. Do you remember also, um, I forget his name, but his character was Madam. Oh, yeah, Waylon Flowers. And yes. <clears throat> he yeah. wasn't a ventriloquist, but no, that's he was not a, a, yeah, puppeteer. Like a, a puppetry, right, yeah. He was on Hollywood Squares for many years. Yes. Very funny guy. He had such a great character with Madam. Unfortunately, he left us too soon. He had passed away. And I, I think that they, the family donated uh, Madam and somebody is going around doing little presentations and uh, carrying on. It was uh, another um, like show in New York City. Again, not ventriloquist dolls, but the big puppets Avenue Q is another really, really good one. If you ever get a chance to see that and they're operating all of these big, big puppets. It's really uh. You must have. Did you always enjoy the Thanksgiving Day Parade? With always, all of yeah. The <laughs> any and all of any the, kind of thing. Did the, you uh, ever go to the uh, – I, I was able to go personally as a friend to the design studio at Macy's, which is in northern New Jersey, right. where they – you get – it's you have to be invited. You have to know people. But it was able to go in several times, usually just maybe – right around now, like in October, uh, to see the designs, to see the floats oh, wow. before everybody else sees them, to see all of the uh, balloons, you know, as they're getting them ready and then go yeah. into the art area and to see the little mini versions and all of the drawings uh, and diagrams the of the characters and oh my goodness, before that. the public <clears throat> saw it on NBC Thanksgiving morning, how cool it was to have an opportunity to, Explore, but I don't know if you ever had a chance to see that. It's actually in Northern no, I didn't. New Jersey. One thing I did get to see, and this goes back years, <clears throat> in Philadelphia, there was uh, Gimbals. They had probably one of the biggest windows. The department in store Philly. Gimbals. Yeah, they had and them they in New had York too. Automatons, which was little dioramas of uh, mechanical figures. And you talk about creepy, but I loved it. That was right up my alley. And there were some people who said, oh, no, we can't, we can't stand it. But at Christmas time, they were dressed up. And it was so great, the family getting together and driving out there into the city. Did, to, did to you get these. into the um, Sid and Marty Croft? Yeah. It's the <laughs> I got to Puffin Stuffs. And uh, we just had Wesley Yor and Kathleen Coleman from Land of the Lost on just a couple uh, of weeks ago who were fantastic. And we had a sweetheart. I, I love Sid watching Croft on too. Yeah. And we talked I about talk to, He's incredible. He is. I, I love all their work. Um, and they were the ones that created the McDonald land um, figures and all the original Hamburglar and stuff. And they got, <clears throat> I think screwed out of a lot of money from McDonald's corporation they sued him over the years and then wound up winning. But uh, uh, Marty Croft, I spoke to years ago on the radio. I interviewed him. And what a fantastic guy. The he stories was. that he tells are extraordinary. Yeah. They're responsible for so much uh, 
kids <clears throat> television and so many other things over the years as well. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, I, yeah, it's really incredible. I loved all the stuff they, they did. And I even like the banana splits. I don't know if you remember the banana that. splits. Tra -la -la. Paul Winchell was the voice of uh, Beagle. I think that's Bengal right. Or whatever his name was. Uh, that was funny. The banana split prevent the banana split. <laughs> There's that voice again. He, uh, <laughs> he also he did the voice in a lot of, and several of the Christmas specials, Rankin and Bass. I believe Paul was in those as well. Some of these. That, their go-to guy was Paul Freeze. Oh, that's who I'm thinking about him too. Well, yes. For this oh, so one of the epic, castle. one yeah. of my ultimate favorite animated voiceover character guys, Paul yeah. Freeze, who also we lost in all those yeah. Rankin and Bass Christmas special. Rudolph, Frosty, The Year Without a Santa Claus, Santa Claus Come yeah. to Town, which still you see today on television. Yeah. Paul Freeze unfortunately took his life uh, towards That's the end. That's right. That sad. I uh, I bought the book um, that his son had put out. What a fascinating guy he was, and uh, he he had some. Uh, well, we're all eccentric. You, I mean, who else has a bunch of dummies in their house and cameras and all? But he was a real eccentric, and he liked law enforcement, and he had a badge and a gun, and he. Uh, it, it was a great story. If you ever have a chance uh, to pick up that book, to pick up read the book. it. Yeah, I forget what the name of it. I think it's Welcome Foolish Mortals or something of that nature. But Paul Fries was in everything. He did so many voices. Boris Bentonoff. The kid cartoons. Uh, yeah, that was yeah. Uh, uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle, right? Yes. Yes. He did uh, all the wacky racers. He did many oh, voices yeah, there. I used, to, I used to watch that. It was. I, I love that voice. I have all the DVDs of that collection. Oh, too. Lucky <laughs> yeah. The yeah. dog too. <laughs> oh, yeah. do that sneaky sound of the dog. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the other thing too, I wanted to ask in addition to ventriloquism as a kid, I also loved magic and had the magic <laughs> sets and all of that. had the spirograph. My sister yeah. had, I had the spirograph. My sister had the light bright we had the microscope, you know, all those cool things. Yeah. And, uh, but I loved magic as well. Did you also like magic? I, I still do. I, you know, of course, uh, <laughs> have uh, something here and <laughs> I, I still dwindle in magic. Uh, the Marshall no, Brodeen. No, where it, where did, where did you slide that into our Horace? <laughs> <laughs> He said, hey, Ow. I heard that. Yeah, he felt that. <laughs> yeah. Then you, oh, here it is there. <laughs> but yeah, I, I loved magic. I, I still have a lot of uh, expensive props, like uh, fitting coins and uh, thumb thumb tips. And, Remember Doug uh, Henning? Oh, of course. Yeah. Another one we lost way too we soon. Lost too uh, soon. Cancer, unfortunately. He was a Canadian um, magician, which uh, he was real... He was the one that put like a ballet kind of a thing into magic. Great, great guy from what I understand. A lot of people that knew him. He had say, specials on NBC sweet, and yeah. everything. I believe it was NBC yep. uh, television specials, the Doug Henning special. And, yeah. And yeah. of course, David Copperfield, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention him. He owns one of the original Charlie McCarthy's. He has nice. one of the largest collections of uh, ventriloquist figures in his museum and what an awesome guy and uh, it, magic and uh, ventriloquism. They all go hand in hand uh, and automatons. It's, it's illusion and right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, which is, I think really cool because it takes us away from some of the realities. I mean, sometimes like with the ventriloquist dolls, they can say what we're thinking. You know what I mean? You can sort of get away with them <laughs> saying can. what, and, and it seems funnier when it is one of those fabulous figures around you with the faces and how dramatic the faces are as the ones that are saying <laughs> what everybody's really thinking. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just funnier when they get away with <laughs> saying it. You can't oh, say it is. that. Why not? You know what I mean? It's just, uh, <laughs> it's cool, huh? Yeah, it is. It's, it's just illusion. And it's just like everything else on stage, whether it's magic, 
is an illusion. And yeah. uh, with these guys, uh, there's a, a lot to it, you know, not just practicing the voice control or, or anything, but uh, there's John Terlitzi. John's my unofficial manager. John, John <laughs> yes. Hey, John, good to see you, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we're getting yeah, a lot yeah. of comments from everybody. We only want to know, do you do, do you have any female characters? I do have a, uh, a, a character it's uh, and I don't ever use uh, females. I don't, I don't know why it's not, it's, it's just hard to do a female voice. that's believable for me. Uh, I guess. Oh, hello. How you doing? It's so good to see you. I guess I could work I'm something out. Nice. But... How are you? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. I've, I've never uh, really tried, even though I do have a, a female figure. And I had a female puppet, and the you kids a used to love that. Figure? Let's see, stand up. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I did, that figure's been gone a long time ago. <laughs> now I, I, <laughs> so I have a uh, dad bod and a half. <laughs> you do a lot of voice work, cartoon characters. Tell us about that, and you've done a lot that of commercials. I did over mostly the years. through uh, the radio station years ago. I had friends of mine that used to be program director and he got me a lot of voiceover work doing all kinds of cartoons for uh, uh, different radio stations. I did uh, anybody out um, towards the center of the country know a, a station called WABT. They called it the rabbit. Uh, I did all their liners for many years. Uh, it was a uh, WABT, the rabbit. Doc, I forget what it was. I said, but it was uh, along that lines, and uh, <clears throat> you know, I used to. Oh, this is Kermit the Frog. Oh, Kermit, Kermit. I haven't practiced in a in a while, but when um, I belonged to Backstage, when I first put my studio in my house, I uh, I was doing voiceovers left and right, uh, and that's where a lot of the cartoon voices came in. I was doing little uh, podcasts uh, for people and they'd say, Hey, can you uh, do like a little voiceover for me? Uh, it's, you know, it's just a little part and they'd include it in their cartoon or whatever. I've never even seen half of them. Uh, a couple of them are for, uh, uh, I got a royalty check from, uh, it was a gaming company. They used my voice for, uh, uh, I forget what it was. It was like a Skeletor kind of voice. Skeletor kind of voice. Yes, and they you know they use they use that <clears throat> and they do give you royalty checks from time to time they do huh uh, which are which are nice they uh they come in handy that's but incredible major yeah. motion pictures uh are the, the ones that get uh, tied in with they work out the best <laughs> yes and commercials and <clears throat> yeah uh, absolutely uh, commercials i haven't really done other than regional i'd like to uh audition for some major stuff Unfortunately, being in South Jersey here, it's it's tough to get up to New York. And right now, with the the situation, the crime, and everything, I'm not going to go to <laughs> New York anytime soon. But I did a bunch of real estate commercials. Bring Horace with you. He'll he'll yeah. He'll be yeah. I'd be afraid that he'd get stolen. As creepy as he is, uh, I heard that. I bet you did. Just mentioned you guys were doing Halloween kills. I don't think that anybody would, uh, <laughs> if you went to any other major big cities around the world. Uh, I don't well, we were in yeah. Harbor Harbor Studios. We had to do uh, the uh, re-recording because in the movie, we uh, the punchline and we're the comedic uh, <laughs> breaking point. Uh, we were in between probably one of the most serious scenes in the whole movie where uh, Diva Taylor gets a tube, a uh, fluorescent tube thrown in her throat. And right after that is where I cut in and we're singing our song, Shaving Cream. I think I'll break off with my girlfriend. Her antics are queer all in it. But uh, we're the, <laughs> we're that part. And uh, it's, I forget what point I was trying to make it that now, but, uh, uh, <clears throat> but anyhow, uh, that's where we come in at, uh, in the movie. And like I said, I lost my train of thought that happens. Well, often you mentioned point, which makes me think as somebody who's done, you know, a lot of radio and TV over the years, mm -hmm. still working in it. Uh, <laughs> I, I once uh, had worked for a, uh, 
it was a radio station at that time. It was uh, adult contemporary, oh, but they yeah. had just they had just shifted from beautiful music and easy listening to adult contemporary. And uh, you know, like in New Jersey, like WPAT and those kinds of stations, yeah. smooth, easy music. <clears throat> So uh, they had a slogan, which I thought was, you appreciate this as a broadcast person. Uh, I, I always love this, this tagline that they had, uh, which we could say at the top of the hour. And it was uh, WTYD. And they were actually in uh, New London, Connecticut. So they <laughs> served like Southeastern <clears throat> Connecticut into Rhode Island and they were you know, they were on the shorelines, so the ocean, the Atlantic, the Long Island Sound. So they would play up that with their top of the hour station identifications, where you would hear the sound of the ocean and the, the bell and the tide, T-Y-D, W-T-Y-D, tide. Mm -hmm. So it was, um, it was W-T-Y-D 100.9 FM. So the line that I thought was so ingenious, and I love the people that come up with these things, you know, and of course, at that time, it was the digital, you know, everything was sort of, you know, you wanted to make sure you were on the right station right. that you were listening yeah. to. So we would say things like, you're listening to WTYD, New London, 100.9 FM. With a point <laughs> makes yeah. all the difference. That's right. <laughs> With a point, the one hundred point <laughs> nine. That point makes all the difference. Yeah. If it's point oh. five or point something, you're not yeah. on WTYD. Yeah, one hundred point nine. With a point makes all the difference. Yep. Back when it was the dial, you you had to know that. The point uh, nowadays makes it doesn't, all the difference doesn't matter. It's all the difference. But, you get all the great music on our <laughs> stage. I remember the point I was going to make. Uh, in the uh, the movie Halloween, yeah, I knew that story and, would jog the memory when I focused on yeah. point. <laughs> uh, our punchline was, and I put my hand over his mouth, and he says the four letter S word, and I say it four times. So when the movie was released, they had me do a version that was cleaned up that they could play on television because, uh, being comedic relief, they needed us in between uh, to set the the story up, and they couldn't cut my part out, which was great. I didn't get the anything cut. So we had to go to Harbor uh, Studios in New York, him and I, and we were in front of a camera and we had to uh, watch what was being, which was already filmed and match his mouth with different words. So uh, where I stepped in a big pile of the four letter S word, then I had to come up with other stuff. Uh, I came up with uh, politics. I stepped in a big pile of politics. <laughs> And then uh, bowel movement, they wanted bowel movement for whatever reason um, to fill that gap. But we had to match the, the mouth and the lips. And that was pretty cool. Uh, but that was in New York City. That was the last time uh, <clears throat> that I was in Brooklyn and uh, then did uh, a couple real estate commercials. Uh, in that is Manhattan. so cool. That is yeah. so cool. Um, you know, when you it's kind of like I've asked this question of people who have uh, characters in a book. And they develop the characters, you know, the character development and yeah. the time put into creating the characters. They have often said things like, you know, for me, I'm very protective of those characters. Those mm -hmm. characters in my book are like my children. Right. Do you find that you have a close connection literally to the figurine, to the, oh, figures, yeah, without, the characters? Without a are doubt. They, like, uh, in a way, they're like family. They are. In fact, like I said, I have 20 figures and I'll never sell. I may donate to the ventriloquist uh, museum, but it, it troubles me to think that in a couple of years that I'd sell Horace or whatever and see somebody else trying to use it. I, I just couldn't because uh, when I look at him, you know, I see the personality that I've created for him, which is sort of like a, a younger Archie Bunker kind of a, a guy. Uh, and same as the others uh, that I've spent so much time with, I I couldn't imagine somebody else using them, or uh, it, it would be like losing a family member. So nothing's gonna. I'm not gonna be selling any of these, and until I pass away, and then like I said, they'll probably be donated to the ventriloquist. Buried with you. <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't do that. Uh, 
Yeah, they, they deserve to live on because they're such great works of art and right. so much time and, uh, you know, sweat equity that was put into them. And uh, do you um, do you feel that people appreciate, you know, there's a lot of things in the entertainment world that people, you know, appreciate and revel in and celebrate. And do you think ventriloquism is an art form that has received its due, that has had it, received the light that it should over the years? Absolutely. Now more than ever. That's with, great. Uh, America's Got Talent has yes. really put uh, ventriloquist in the forefront. Right on the front page. Uh, Jeff yeah. Dunham has done an outstanding job. I've got to give Absolutely. Jeff a lot of credit. Uh, and also uh, Willie Tyler for carrying on as long as he has. And they, you know, kept it in the forefront. And, uh, you know, Jeff has just batted it out of the park uh, mm -hmm. with his uh, yeah. lip control, his yeah. manipulation, his character development and the backstories and the voices. He, he's just done it all. And then Terry Fader, who, I mean, America's Got Talent, he did at last better than Etta James did. the, And it sounded just like her. And. And then Darcy Lynn, she's the young one. She's, I think, 17 now. And she's done a tremendous job. Uh, Celia Munez from Spain. I can't mention her name enough. She was such a sweet lady. Uh, <clears throat> and Lori Bruner out of Kentucky in her own right. Uh, Lori is a great friend of mine. Uh, she performs a lot in the Midwest there. She does a lot of shows. And David Pendleton, like I said. Mm. Jimmy V, Al Gettler, uh, Dan Satchel, if you can catch him on YouTube, uh, there's so many guys, uh, Bob Abdu, uh, <laughs> Dan Horn, who uh, Dan has, uh, he had Orson, he still does, and he oh, just retired. Yeah. Wow. Uh, That's incredible. Great friends of mine. Uh, and I uh, love them dearly. You, uh, there's a lot of people can see on uh, TikTok, huh? Dupree Studios yeah. on TikTok. So you yeah. do little vignettes. Tell us about what you do on the. On yeah, TikTok. on there, it's a lot of informational. I, I, everything that I own that's antique, I do a little, uh, you know, a short little dib on each thing, mainly the antique broadcast microphones. I have a huge collection of the old RCA yeah. mics. Yeah. I've, uh, in my collection, uh, old on air lights. I've got yeah. the, the originals. Uh, when everybody else was throwing them away, I was taking them out of the garbage. I would appreciate the one that I see the one I use. Yeah. Oh, uh, awesome. <laughs> it's like a Johnny Carson type. Yeah. 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 The Johnny Carson type was, uh, an RCA 77 B and, uh, 77 DX and, uh, and great and mics. Fabulous. Um, you and I were chatting before we went live, but you've got two real studio cameras, one from NBC, one from CBS behind you. And that's just some yeah. of the collection that you've amassed over the years. Tell us about that. Yeah, I actually have uh, four. These are just two that you can see. I have another one uh, just off camera. That one doesn't have any call letters on it. Um, I think it, but uh, the one from NBC over... <laughs> it's hard. My camera's reversed, but uh, the one from NBC, actually, I picked up in an auction uh, of NBC items. The uh, the lenses I picked up at a later time because they're so darn expensive, but the units themselves, back in the 70s, people were thinking, why are we even saving these things? We'll just throw them away. And that's what happened. A lot of them got thrown away. Others got put in warehouses. I was lucky enough to hit an auction and, and bought the one from NBC. And then uh, I had uh, was refurbishing. I was calling people up to find parts. And they said, you know, there's a guy that's selling a CBS one that came from uh, CBS Channel 2 in New York. I said, you're kidding. So I went all the way up to there and uh, drove my truck and, and picked it up. And the, the pedestals, which you can't really make out, but they're huge. It's like the robot from Lost in Space. That's how big they are, the the pedestals that they're on and that's how they were you know their shore glides they would uh the old vinton original studios uh, uh yeah of course the way dummies was, in right? a way but uh they weighed probably about 800 pounds each and they i have three of them yeah heavy duty and then the other one's uh, being refurbished in my garage but the microphones, I have so many of the old capsule type, like you'd see on David Letterman's desk or 
uh, Johnny Carson, or in the old days of, uh, you know, early broadcasts, you'd see him make a mistake. The boom operator would bring the boom would come down. Up. And but, now at HD, as things more expanded, you can actually yeah, see you can actually, some <laughs> of the boom cameras and the yeah. edge of the set. And of course, uh, so many of the microphones yeah. that would have the wires when they were on set walking, like the price is right, Bob Barker, the wire, the thin mic, but the long yeah. wire that goes. And sometimes the contestant <laughs> would have to like, when they were going to look at the showcase, they'd have to like jump over the wire. And it was just really, and I think uh, one of those thin wire, the wire, the microphone, the thin microphone that Gene Rayburn used on Match Game, Gene Rayburn desi uh, designed, hey, there's the chair. Yes. Anybody who is a longtime viewer of our show loves seeing the chair that the guest is sitting in because we've had so many guests get up and get the Oscar, the Emmy, get something, <laughs> the book to show us. And we well, see the chair. And my aunt Gertie has the same chair that you're hmm. sitting in. <laughs> Does she? Well, here's the uh, Gene Rayburn microphone. Hey, Wait folks, how are you? you got that? How cool I have one. Yes, he designed that, right? He said he designed yeah. that microphone yep. and you see it him was, using it on match game. It was actually uh, Sony put it out and it's the ECM 31 M ladies and gentlemen, who's next. And, there was and a reason sort of why it was so long. Open, it went up and down. You could slide it up and down, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, it was telescopic. And his, of course, had the uh, uh, pop filter on it, which it made it look like it was round. It really wasn't round. But the reason they used the long one is because you could, with very little hand movement, you could, uh, you know, and that's what it was all about was doing interviews and uh, you wouldn't have to move your your hand much, but uh, yeah, that's the uh, elect electric microphone, and, uh, and he, he was the one that designed it. In fact, yeah, like there's the the ball for it, but yeah, it's it's amazing. I have just about every kind of microphone um, made uh, in the you know the early twenties. All the way up to uh, today. Uh, do you have tape recorders too? I used to have a little Panas Panasonic tape recorder <laughs> and reel to reels, and oh yeah. Yeah, I have the the techniques. I have the Otaris. Uh, I have a big storage area, and a lot of that stuff is in it. Like a storage uh, bin. A uh, storage area. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it has. He a has lot no of furniture, folks. He just has the figures, and he has the microphones mm -hmm. and the cameras, and yeah. and and that's about it. And just one box of uh, Quisp. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, you can't make it out. You can see part of it, but um, the world's largest uh, microphone. It's uh, it's about eight feet long. They use it. Uh, it's a boom microphone. It's an electro voice. That was from NBC Studios, but that's in between the the two cameras. But that's that's a very unique microphone. Very rare. You can't find them anymore. Uh, but uh, do you ever feel like you're a kid in a candy store? I am, or, or in a toy store. <laughs> it's like Christmas. Every time I come down, I look at the cameras. I still move them a little bit when I dust them and. You uh, dust them too, yeah. Yeah, you got to dust them. <laughs> but <laughs> I I still uh, revel in the thought of, I wish I could figure out what studio these were actually in and mm. uh, what they were used for. I know the NBC was in uh, Studio I like 3B. The there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the setup you did for us. Yeah. Yeah. Today's show. That's cool. <clears throat> Gives people a, a scope of the size of the area too. Yeah, you can see the uh, pedestals that... Uh, the cameras are mounted on and you can see how big they are, but they do. They look like the, the base of the robot on uh, lost in space. That I used to have robot. that robot as a kid. Yeah. I, I still have one, a uh, couple just, steps from me. Do you, yeah. Uh, my sister in fact, that picture that you out. just had, you can see him uh, on my desk right on there. The, see oh, yeah, on the left. There's on the, the left. Robot. <laughs> my sister had the Mrs. Beasley doll from family affair. Oh, wow. Mrs. Beasley. That's, that's Mrs. Beasley? pretty creepy. Pretty creepy. Mrs. Beasley. Though, <laughs> I say that and I have a, 
you know, a bunch of ventriloquist figures around me. But uh, yeah, Mrs. Beasley, uh, when I was a kid, I always thought, oh, that's, that's creepy. It's an interesting <laughs> doll, right? So why yeah. do you love this so much? I mean, you've been doing it since you were a child. It's brought and you great joy. It, it has. It, you know, it's brought so many others great joy. It's something I know <laughs> that you know, uh, have you ever taught it as well? Have you ever thought of teaching? Yes. Yeah, actually, I, uh, <clears throat> one of the, my friends, her daughter, uh, who wound up going to the ventriloquist convention, I've given her a lot of pointers and uh, a lot of people over the years, I've actually mentored and uh, taught them lip control and how to substitute different uh, things. Um, <clears throat> but anybody you, that wants to you learn. Were, if you taught people lip control, they could use you in D.C., <laughs> <laughs> yeah the problem is it's a uh, brain control <laughs> in dc that's a picture from tropicana and that was one of the uh figures that i use that's averna finley uh, how Verna many years were you you know headlining there at tropicana in Atlantic um, city well i wasn't actually a headliner i uh <clears throat> i was one of their uh in-house entertainers i was there about nine years very uh, that's a long time yeah yeah it was gig, yeah but uh I was in the showroom quite often and yeah. uh, you know wow you're digging up some <laughs> we work hard I'm, I, a, I'm a professional yeah yeah you are you uh, you've dug deep for uh, some of these pictures that of course is Horace and me back in the day well, this is that's a uh, yeah that's actually the setup for uh, Halloween kills uh, when you see the movie you think boy the camera doesn't look like it's that close but uh, actually they are and it's amazing how the filming process. I learned so much in such a short period of time. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's amazing to, to watch uh, how they create the film. And it was a, a noisy bar scene. And if you see the movie, you hear glasses clicking and this, that, and the other thing. But in reality, it's totally quiet. There's not a single noise in there. They had the microphones on stage, but they weren't the ones that we were actually using. I had one that was under my shirt they had what's known as rice mics. Yeah. Everybody had to be quiet. They had earwigs in my ear so I could hear uh, the director and I could hear the music. But all the poor extras that was in front of me, they couldn't hear anything except my voice. So when I'm singing, I think I'll break off with my girlfriend, I could hear the music in my ear, but nobody else could because they needed to extract my voice and only that for the, the filming. It was really neat how that worked, but I felt so bad for all those poor extras that were sitting there in the audience having to listen to hear me sing uh, four times in a row the same song. Uh, <clears throat> but then when they did the bar part where the camera is way back and you hear uh, uh, Anthony Michael Hall doing his <clears throat> dialogue with uh, Michael Smallwood, I was... Uh, I had the playback in my ear and they had me pantomiming and they played back, which what I already sang. So it looked like I was still singing it. And I really wasn't. And they reset the camera back. So it looked like I was doing my act for the first time. And here it was just dialogue for them. And then of course the clinking glasses and all the noises put in in post-production. And it's amazing how they, they did that, but it was silent in there. It was silent in there, right? <clears throat> yeah. And uh, we we filmed in September. I was there from the <clears throat> 16th through the 21st, I think, or mm. 22nd uh, in North Carolina at Screen Gem Studios, where we were out of. But uh, we were in the Rusty Nail. It was Screen an actual Gem bar. So oh, boy, Screen And that's Gems. what was, yeah, that was a mixed bar, is so they said. So people went past that knew it was the Rusty Nail, saw a sign out front that said mixed bar. They were wondering, what's going on here? But then... <laughs> Uh, you know, these film trucks pull in and they have yeah. canopies all over the whole building. And it was pretty cool how they, that is they so filmed cool. it. What are some of those blessings and joys in your life, my friend, that keep you doing this, entertaining mm -hmm. us, creating this art and sharing it in the way that you do and have all these years? And how has since childhood entering into this incredible craft of ventriloquism changed your life, Mike? Well, it, it definitely has for the better. It's uh, given me an outlet, um, something that normally I would have been bypassed, uh, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But fortunately, with the puppeteering and the ventriloquism, I was given like a, 
a boost up. When I was a, a lineman doing the uh, shows for the kids and all in the school, since I was a uh, ventriloquist, I had the ability to go out to these schools and and make an act, absolute difference in the kids' lives where normally a lineman would come in and say, yeah, this is this, that, and, that, and the kids, you know, in one ear, out the other. But when the dummy started talking and joking around with the kids about the safety things, they could say perbatim the whole act that I would do, they would repeat it. Um, if I saw them out in the store somewhere, or uh, if I was doing a local show, but it's just the sharing and the difference. I used to do religious stuff. Um, I'd go to church and, and volunteer, uh, you know, my talent for a little bit. I call it talents really an affliction, but it helped me cope. And I loved uh, dealing with the uh, children that had the, you know, autism and uh, also, uh, you know, children that were really less fortunate that had down syndrome or whatever they were always the best uh a local kid that uh, had down syndrome richie he loved uh, my figure augie and <clears throat> i'm sorry that i didn't have a picture to supply of him but uh, he's since passed away but he loved that figure and it again it would make him come out of his shell and um, make him laugh and his parents loved that and just making that kind of a difference. Uh, that was payment enough for me, but how beautiful uh, is that? Right. Touching was, lives like that. Yeah. It's it was great, great to be able to share it with people and make people yeah. laugh. That's what it's all about. That's what life's it all is. about. It's it really an art is. form. Yeah. It's an art form mm -hmm. and human connection and empathy and mm -hmm. kindness and compassion. And it's a beautiful thing you're doing and uh, you're doing it with the humor and the wit and, right. you know, which I think is really, really cool. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking too, you remember Art Cloakey and Davy? And oh, Gumby sure. Gumby. Gumby did and, you enjoy? Yeah. I love I love the way they oh, did absolutely. all of that. And Pokey. Just the uh, way they did it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love those. And Davy and Goliath. He did Davy and Goliath. Davy and Goliath. I mean, there was incredible Luther, stuff. Yeah. Ahead of its time. Absolutely. Rudimentary in some ways, but that's what gives it the character. Yeah. yeah. And, and I love that nostalgic stuff. That stop uh, action kind of thing. Yeah. It is. Play and... and and unfortunately, we don't see that much anymore. No, everything is, yeah. It's, it's now very it's digital. digital and now. now with AI, uh, it's going to yeah. be a thing of the past. But maybe old things will be resurrected because I love Laurel and Hardy and the Three Stooges. Maybe with AI down the road sometime, um, as long as they take care of their families or whatever, they'll have, uh, you know, a new Three Stooges with AI or, or whatever. But that remains to be seen. I don't want to see anybody living or, uh, you know, get taken out of a, a movie uh, like it happened in uh, Back to the Future. Mm, uh, right. And the, <clears throat> that one actor, Crispin Glover, uh, they had a mask on a guy and they totally fired him and put this guy in that looked just like him with that mask. And I, I don't like that. Want, want to see anybody lose out. Because Great that. words from the guy <laughs> from AC talking about AI <laughs> in NJ. <laughs> just <bought> the fillet. <laughs> you got a bad sense of humor just like I do. You are. The, it's the Irish. Uh, we yeah. have a lot of fun together hanging uh, out. <laughs> I, we're going to have to. I'll bring my Matchbox yeah. cars and my toys and yeah, I still uh, the, have George all mine. Burn, the George Burns doll I have that was given to me. Uh -huh. The I Dream a Genie bottle that I have oh. and all these cool that things. That was actually a liquor bottle from Jim Beam. Jim Beam. That's the right. 19, I think it was 1963 60s. Jim Beam bottle. It was but like you can still get them on bottle. eBay. <laughs> a dark green bottle, and yeah. that's what they used to fashion the I Dream of Genie bottle, right? <laughs> really cool. You, you saw they tore down the Warner Ranch, right? And all those, yeah, guys, that was hard. Bewitched and Partridge Family, and I Dream of Genie, yeah. and Bridget and Hazel, and mo the movies. They tore all that down. I know that, that I was watching, uh, I think it's Adam the Woo. Uh, was taking a tour and he's the one that said, uh, you know, they're going to be tearing this down and they've given me a last look. And he went through the whole neighborhood, the Griswold house, the yes. house from lethal weapon, the, uh, uh, uh leave it the beaver house. And it, it was just a shame, but they are just shells, but still there's a, a piece of them. That's, you know, it's always going to be in my heart. Cause I love those old shows. And even though, you know, that, uh, they, they couldn't be around forever. Even the monster's house uh, that got torn down. Uh, 
it's got all of that. Yeah. When I was on a TV shoot, um, and I mentioned this a couple of times in the show out in, uh, LA, they were working on the HGTV was working on the renovation of the, of the Brady, Brady Bunch house. house. Oh yeah. And turning the facade or <laughs> turning the inside of that house, which was used just really for the facade right. or the series. And then of course they shot that entire series, uh, at the Paramount Studios, right. I said, I got to go to the Brady Bunch house and see it and see what they've done with it. So I went there and I only had time in between the television shoot locations we had to go to, to make it to the Brady Bunch house and get shots, you know, and standing in front of it and, yeah. and talking to people there. Cause I did get a chance to have a wonderful <laughs> meeting and conversation and all kinds of wonderful things with Florence Henderson. Mm. And, uh, and she actually sat on my lap once. Oh, I, actually, I was holding <laughs> up to Brady at a gala event and the photographers squeezed <clears> everybody <throat> together and said, Oh, I'll get together. And, and she's in a white pants. So she sits on my lap oh, and, wow. and I have, and I have her on my lap and I'm holding her up. And to the left of me is Sonny Grasso, who was the detective ah, in New York yeah. that they patterned the French detective yeah. French connection after. I'm French like, connection, yeah. Sonny Grasso on the left. And I've got, and I'm holding up Mrs. Brady. I'm now an 11 year old kid again. <laughs> pork chop, shin apple shash. Yeah, I just reverted back to being an 11 year old kid. But I had to see that house. And then there was another house I wanted to see, uh, which was up in Pasadena. And it was the house, beautiful house, beautiful neighborhood. It was the house used in the te television, the Aaron Spelling drama, family drama, family with Kristen oh, McNichol okay. and yeah. Santa Thompson, Quinn Cummings, Meredith Baxter Burney, James Broderick, Matthew Broderick's father played Doug Lawrence, yeah. the dad. Claimed actress Santa Thompson was the mom, Kate Lawrence. Christy McNichol was Buddy. Buddy yeah. Lawrence, remember the series? And sure it do. was really a terrific series. And that house is real and that house is there. Wow. And they used <clears> that <throat> house, you know, basically the outside and the backyard right. and everything for that series. And it turns out for several other things, including movies, which I thought was really kind of right. cool. Yeah. yeah. Happy days. That house is yeah. still standing and it looks exactly the same as it did. In Don the Most was with us just a week ago. Was Ralph he? Mouth. Yeah. yeah he, Harry uh, Ross was with us on our show too. Gang, you can see he? all these episodes archived on our YouTube. Yeah, channel. I'm gonna have to go Mary back. Marion Ross, and Anson Williams was with us. Uh yeah, her son's a Harry. nice guy. <clears throat> Marion Ross's son. Oh, Jim Mesh does impression. He does so many impressions He's that are fantastic. spot on. He does Robin Williams better than Robin Williams does. <laughs> he sort of looks like him anyhow, but yeah. oh, what he does. <laughs> yeah. We're trying to get Henry Winkler. I'd love to get Henry Winkler on the show. We've had, you know, Ansi Williams has been here and Marion Ross has been here and uh, Donnie Most has been here twice. And, uh, and of course, Tom Bosley's gone and Aaron yeah. is gone, but we would love to, uh, you know, of course, Ron Howard would be great too, but yeah. uh, you know that sometimes <laughs> Henry, Henry Winkler does like to do some conversations and things. And he's got a new book out too, I think, coming soon, memoir type thing. So I tell you, my friend, this was a hoot. I hope the yeah, show met whatever expectations <laughs> you had and you enjoyed the time absolutely. with me as much as I absolutely have with you, Mike. <laughs> I could go on forever talking with you because you're uh, of the same era as I am and have the same interest. And it's uh, it was a great connection. I, I I felt like I was sitting here talking with a buddy at a, at a bar or something. <laughs> Not that I hang out at bars, mind you, but... Uh, now the Horace bite, <laughs> but yeah, it's a similar kind of, con I, that's why I tell people these aren't interviews. I do this show in the style of conversations like Merv Griffin, Mike Douglas, Dick Cavett, Johnny Carson, Steve Allen, Regis, some of the legends, but with a modern vibe and a modern twist of today. So you take the old school style of the art of conversation, the warmth, interactivity, live viewers commenting, and also at the same time, non-scripted none of it you had yeah. no idea what i was going to ask no. there were no questions prepared none of that this was an actual <laughs> uh ad hoc off the cuff ad lib <clears throat> conversation which for me being doing so much live television and radio and you know what live is too it's just something about that feeling of the live and just we take it down whatever road we take it down and you and i 
we meandered through a lot of different things in the <laughs> conversation, did. which I thought was awesome. And yeah. including the, your fabulous family surrounding you as well. <laughs> uh, this yeah. was absolutely really terrific, my friend. And you are welcome back uh, anytime and spread the word about our show. You know, <laughs> nice will, guests, Jim, I... you know, that you think would like to pop on the Jim Master Show Live series. Uh, love to have them. And um, truly, really, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this uh, time and, We'll keep that porch light on for you. You are welcome back anytime, Mike. Well, thanks, Jim. I, I appreciate that. And I will. I'll be sending some people your way from the ventriloquist world. And uh, there are some characters out there. There's a few characters <laughs> out there. It'd be a great fit for your show because I love your persona here that you have uh, is outstanding. You make everybody feel so comfortable. I appreciate and, that. And as my father has now. Oh, I appreciate that. Well, my <laughs> father always said, and I'll say this again, and I know some of our faithful viewers who watch all the time have heard this, but I've said this for years, and I just love it. That's why I say it so much. You know how sometimes a parent or a family member or just somebody in your life when you're a kid, as you've seen, as you've had in your life, can impart some really cool adult-like wisdom into your life early, and hopefully you, you listen to what they say and you grasp onto it. And then it comes back as the years go on. And the line, one of many, my father has always said, these fabulous you know, uh, observations of crazy life. Jimmy, yes, I'm like seven years old. Jimmy, whenever anybody says something kind or nice to you, always say thank you. And then ask them to please put it in writing and address it management. <laughs> 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 so true right <laughs> you know Wh wherever management is whoever they are just put those nice words you <laughs> about me in writing in an envelope and send it to management <laughs> i see where you get your wit from <laughs> yes. oh yeah absolutely irish dad from new york city yeah, yeah. i grew up he grew up around the block from tony bennett yeah that whole time yeah cool cool awesome. stuff yeah New York I would Met love to have been live back then in the early days. You would like to be. Yeah. Do you feel you're yeah. an old soul? I had absolutely. Or too I love late, sort of. Yeah. Old, yep. The, the old ways. And yeah. Ernie Kovacs. Uh, oh, my oh God. Gosh. Yes. Yeah. Ernie Kovacs. Gee, you don't hear that name so much, but no. he, was, I, every, he was unique. He was ahead of his time. And another guy that just died way, way too young. Uh, I think he was only 40 something, but died in a horrific car accident it was in 1962. Yeah. And uh, they were just, just going to be filming uh, It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. And, and he was supposed to be in it. Yes. And Edie, um, he got killed three months before. And Edie still um, carried on. And they had Sid Caesar fill in the, Sid the spot Caesar. for Ernie. Who did a great job too? Yeah, but yeah. What an interesting character he is with his. Yeah. His, 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 you ever seen him in an interview with his eyes twitching? And yeah. Nervous character. Yeah. You know, when, when like a big celebrity of of, uh, of his ilk would pass away, and they would ask him for his opinion. You know, what'd you think about that person? And and just the way his speech pattern and the and the yeah. nervous nature of it was so fantastic. I used to love yeah. to watch that. Yeah. yeah. Cool stuff. Yeah. It was. I love the uh, a lot of great legends. Yeah. Nostalgia, Without absolutely. And you, you're keeping it alive with the work you're doing, and uh, I'm keeping <laughs> things you. alive at least on this series here. And no, we I will, appreciate uh, that. Ah, the pleasure is all mine, Mike Dupree. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really uh, fabulous having you here. You can spread the word. I shall do the same. New friend <laughs> made. And let's definitely stay in contact. And and thank all of the cast of characters that are around you for. Joining. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> they they knocked it out of the park. They knocked it out of the You're park. You darn right we did. And, and I just love the way they've been just sitting there intently listening yeah. to this conversation, especially yeah, the one to the left of you. I mean, he just, he's <laughs> just, look at that expression. Oh, I like this guy. <laughs> he's just like, <laughs> but the only thing about how'd that happen? This time his lips didn't move, but yours did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they, they are pulling oh. your strings, aren't they? they yeah. They're the yeah, ones pulling sure. your strings. <laughs> right. Yeah. Imagine if you did that, you went on stage one day and you did that like you were coming on 
And instead of doing the way you do it as a craftsman, you just do that when you're pulling the mouth up and down. <laughs> yeah. Wait, am I doing something wrong? You're not supposed to do it this way? <laughs> Actually, years ago, I, I had one of the strings break when I'm doing the mouth. And then the mouth was... Ugh. So I had to come up real quick and say, oh, so you're not talking to me. Be, uh, <laughs> so I had to carry on a little bit. And then got, I got, your got rid yeah. of him and then... You got rid of him. One, but, Boy, you get rid of happens. People. You got rid of him. You got rid of a priest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the priest was the easiest. Maybe one I don't think I will come to visit. I might not return home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll be in the bookshelf because I have these uh, cubbies that each one sits in with their own little uh, persona. <laughs> I have one, well, Jim Masters uh, <laughs> cubby. There are there are no bedrooms in that house. Everybody goes in the yeah. cubby. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even my cubby. son and my daughter, they've got yeah. their own cubbies. <laughs> they got their own cubbies. <laughs> well, maybe I would fit right in. I was in the Cub Scouts. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> we are too much. I tell you, we should have charged a cover charge for this. We should have on this one. <laughs> what is this? You got to start charging for these shows. All right, my friend, you be well, and thanks. Jim, thank you so much. It's been such an honor to be on your show. I had a a blast, a great time, and we have to do it again sometime. And if you're ever in the Atlantic City area, uh, stop by. I'd love to have you. Uh, There's there's always a bus to hop on that's heading in your direction. There you go. (laughs) And I I head up north all the time. What are they? uh, (laughs) Fungwa, right, I think? Uh, Fungwa buses? (laughs) Yeah, uh, Jitneys. (laughs) Yeah, hurrahs and uh, yeah. and all kinds of busing, but uh, right. yeah, it's it's been a pleasure, and I'm yeah, so glad yeah. that I had the opportunity to chat with you. God, the pleasure is all mine. You be well. Let's stay in touch, and we'll chat again soon, my friend. Okay, <laughs> sounds great. Thanks for the laughs, the entertainment, <laughs> and bringing the guys to life as you did. We really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome, Jim. It's been a pleasure on my end. All right, <laughs> which end? <laughs> <laughs> Just watch out. I've got to. <laughs> he, he could bring Horace back out and speak yeah. the truth. It's been a pleasure on my yeah. end. <laughs> he does have soft hands, you know. You, it's been a pleasure on your end, and you've been sitting in a hard wood chair for two hours. You're going to have hemorrhoids. Are you sure yeah. it's a pleasure on your end? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm made out of the naughty pine. Stop yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> and I got Dutch Elm's disease. <laughs> I tell you, he's uh, he's on fire tonight. Yeah, All right, my butt. All right, gentlemen. <laughs> you be well, okay? You as well. Great seeing you, Jim. You too. We'll chat again See soon. See you, Tim. It's Jim. <laughs> Thanks, Boris. <laughs> I heard that. I'm sure you did. And you don't miss a trick. <laughs> oh, there's a whole thing there, but we'll leave that. Yeah. See you later. <laughs> we don't say goodbye around here. We say... See you later. See ya. We'll fade, to black. we'll fade to black. We don't do a exit stage left cane. We'll just have you exit. fade to black. Take care. Night, night. Right. <laughs> Lots of laughs. Good times with uh, Mike and the gang. Yes, Horace and company. Uh, joining us here on the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did and so many of our viewers watching did. If this was your first time watching, we say thank you very much. If you enjoyed this episode, give this episode a thumbs up like on our YouTube channel while you're watching right now. We'd really appreciate that. There is a thumbs up icon. It's a big thumb. Make sure you hit the one that's pointed up. (laughs) <laughs> uh, we would love that. It's on the, the episode. Click the thumbs up. Also, drop a comment for us. Interact with us. Let us know what you enjoyed about this episode and what you enjoy about our series. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. It does take a village that helps us grow. We've welcomed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of subscribers recently. Click the subscribe button. Don't forget to click the notification bell on the YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. So when you click that little bell icon, you'll receive alerts, notifications from us when we have all these great episodes and shows. Well, I mean, we're on just about every day. We're only about four shows away now from a thousand episodes in three and a half years, which anybody that knows episodic broadcasts, that is, you know, one after the other, that's a lot of shows that we have done more than a lot of major television series have, and it's incredible and we love it. So uh, gang, if you love what we're doing here at the Gym Master Show Live, don't keep it a secret. Tell everybody you know, spread the levity as we call it, celebrate what we're doing, come see us again. 
we absolutely have, you know, a door open for you. And thanks to everybody for all these great comments, for all the lovity. Don't forget, you can always support us uh, through Super Chat, Super Emoji, Super Stickers, which is something very special that we are able to offer you the opportunity to uh, endeavor in and bark in on our lovely hall chat room there while the shows are live or anytime there's a little heart icon on all the episodes when you look at the screen you know when you're looking at the youtube channel and you're watching an episode there's a little heart icon on the bottom near the title of the episode it's a little heart i think it's got a little dollar sign if you click that that helps uh, support what we're doing here at j MS, the Jim Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. So thanks for all the comments, the interactivity. Thanks for everything, all the levity. And again, we really, truly thank uh, not just our special guest, but surprise guests. Uh, yes, the ventriloquist family joining us with Mike Dupree. Extraordinary ventriloquist, comedian, cartoon voice actor, entertainer extraordinaire, and just an all around good guy uh, celebrating, you know, humor and entertainment and good vibes. And what a story in the beginning, you know, he shared with us, um, you know, and how learning ventriloquism actually helped him sort of come out of his shell when he was a child, deal, you know, with the autism and things of that nature. That's a beautiful thing. You know, these kinds of things, music and art and, entertainment and just, just a lot of things that can actually help us all uh, be entertained and smile and, and feel that the world is a little bit sweeter than maybe it really is. And I think that's, that's really cool stuff. And we celebrate it all here on the Jim Masters show. So with all that, I'm your host, Jim Masters. I'm thanking all of you, everybody watching around the world, internationally, all the different time zones. Thank you very much for stopping by our show. Come back and see us again. And I thank you for your time this time till next time. We always love having you here. We appreciate you being here. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Gym Master Show Live. Take care and be well. And cheers. <laughs>